0864. Stations, your final time cue will be with 15 seconds until airtime. Mark, 15 seconds until airtime. Feels great to be a duck. Give it to me, baby. My house. I'm taking it there. Third competitors don't want to put the O on. Three. Got it. We're going to compete to a standard every day. The Oregon standard. Rebound. Hey. It's been in. A point more to go. The opportunity to play, put Oregon on your chest, should mean a great deal to you. Unloads on one into left field. Back toward the wall. Gone. This program is staged to compete and to win championships. Oregon. This is Doc Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Better banking, local solutions. Live from the Country Financial Studio, let's talk Oregon athletics. It is game day here on the University of Oregon campus. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jordan Brenner. Welcome inside the Country Financial Studio. Doc Insider is brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union. Three game series starting tonight at Jane Sanders Stadium. It's a big series against Arizona because the Ducks are starting to go on a run in the Pac-12. Three games back of second place and, well, a chance to win some games against an Arizona team that sure is traditionally excellent, but they're 3-12 and this year. Big series. Uh, time to make a move for Oregon softball coming off of a sweep against Arizona State, which, by the way, doesn't happen very often, especially down in Tempe. Oregon baseball will be in action tonight against the University of California Golden Bears. Similar story for Duck baseball. Nine and six in conference play and just two games back of second and three games back of first. Well, you have Stanford playing Washington, two good teams. Maybe Stanford drops one or two of those. UCLA and USC, two good teams. Maybe UCLA drops games in front of Oregon. Arizona State is playing the Beavers. We don't like the Beavers, but they've been pretty good recently. Arizona State a chance to win some games. So if Oregon takes care of business in Berkeley this weekend, who knows how the Pac-12 standings could look on Sunday evening. Well, we got a lot of interviews today and some good ones too. We'll hit Melissa Lombardi. We'll do some Oregon softball student athletes and then one of the best interviews in the department, the running backs coach, Carlos Lachlan, later on in the show, so I hope you stay with us. We'll start with Melissa Lombardi, previewing a three-game series with Arizona starting tonight at the Jane. Swept your first weekend. Just uh, how did it feel to sort of hit the benchmark you wanted to going in? Yeah, it felt good. I thought these guys played really well all weekend long, and it was important, especially having the opportunity to get the series and then the opportunity to get the sweep. I think it was important for that to happen. You said that this team's just playing hot at the right time. What sort of goes into that? Is there just specifically with any position group like, okay, that this group is doing this better and that's why we're having success? I just think in all areas, um, I think um, you see the things that we're doing on defense and turning the double play balls. I thought our pitchers were excellent. I mean, you're going to a um, – a park where the air is thin and the ball travels and they did a great job of keeping the ball in the yard. Um, so I love how they really attacked the hitters and, and just really executed the game plan. And then I think our hitters um, seeing different people come up and being clutch versus, you know, having to depend on a couple like we need everybody. Um, so just seeing everybody making their contributions, um, I think was the reason why we did so well. The pitching staff as a whole is coming together really well right now. I think it's five combined runs in six straight games. So how is it where you can kind of throw anyone out there and there's going to be zeros on the scoreboard? Um, I, I think for them it's just important to continue to work ahead, to change speeds, and then to allow their defense to work behind them. I think when we get into trouble, it's we're not working ahead um, and, and having to throw extra, you know, extra pitches in each at bat. So I just thought they were really clean with, with um, how they were attacking the hitters. Is there a way that you can kind of get them to that point where 
right now they are pitching ahead. Is, is there a way where if they're sort of out of that funk, you have like a trick where it's, you know how to talk to each pitcher and it's, okay, we're getting back in now. We're getting back ahead in counts. We're resetting. I think it's just them and where they are in the season, trusting and who they are, uh, you know, and what they're capable of doing on the mound and then just trusting the people around them. You mentioned the double plays, but the outfield actually showcased themselves pretty well this mm -hmm. weekend too, you know, particularly uh, Kai and Kedry. Can you just speak to the overall, you know, defense of showcasing and how, you know, they really put that on display this weekend? Yeah, um, I I thought we had some, you know, we talked about 50-50 plays. Um, I thought we made some of those. Kedry had a great catch in right field. Um, I think it's important, you know, like we want to make all the routine plays, but to have opportunity to make the 50-50 plays, I think that's both are game changing. And I think that was what was huge for us this weekend. Our defense has always been really good, but to consistently do what we need to do goes a long way. For Kai in that play in game one, running into the fence full speed, is that something as a coach where you're like, yes, I'm happy you did that? Or it's like, uh, that, that's a little too fast going into the fence. <laughs> no, I love it. She's a competitor. Um, I'm just glad that after she hit the wall, she was okay. So, but no, love it. I love it. That sort of t tenacity in the outfield, is, is that just the competition you sort of want to be breeding out there where every ball you want someone thinking, okay, I'm getting to that regardless of how it sort of looks off the bat? Yes, for sure. And they, they have that expectation as well. So, I mean, our outfield is our last line of defense. So, you know, they're, they're so crucial for us, and I think they've done a great job. The base running, the, the focus has always been on being aggressive. This weekend, there were a couple of just – you know, oddities of uh, runner interferences. You guys hadn't had one all season. All of a sudden, you have two in one game. But the team didn't let that kind of impact them. They continued on being aggressive. And actually, I think it was KK that had that really great stop. Um, yeah. Where she almost got hit. Could you just speak to how you know the team kind of battled against that and mm -hmm. persevered? Um, I, you know, I think that's just the number one rule in softball is that you know, as a base runner, that you're not going to get tagged out or run in to the defender and you saw that happen to us twice which is just not that's not us i think we run the bases really really well um and sometimes it just happens sometimes you just have something that just doesn't quite go your way and it happened twice um but i think what's been great with this team is they're just really caught up in what's in front of them and it happened there's nothing we can do about it it's just about moving on and moving on to the next you know the next play so i think they've been doing a good job of that Speaking about what's in front of you guys, these next uh, few weeks before the postseason hits, obviously the postseason has been a really big topic since we first talked to you before the season. Um, and the girls seem like they know how important these next few weeks are before the postseason hits. Just what are you, some of your goals for the team other than winning, obviously, um, to help prepare you guys? Not that you're not prepared now because you are, but prepare you guys for what you're going to face in the postseason. Mm -hmm. I think just the Pac-12 alone prepares us for postseason, whether we like it or not. Um, uh, you know, you look in the majority of the games that we played in have been games that we've had to grind it out all the way to the, the final out of the game. And I think just that right alone uh, there on its own is going to do a lot for us. Um, you know, you don't have a lot, of, you play a tough game, you don't have a lot of breathing room. You've got to be really clean with what you do. Uh, you've got to get over things quickly if they didn't go your way. And you got to look for different people to step up. But I, to me, those are the things that I'm seeing with our, our team right now that's allowing us to play well. Uh, they know what we need to do. You know, I, to me, it makes no sense to want big things and to go on this journey and then hide things from them. They're, we all completely understand what we need to do moving forward. And I just want us to continue to continue to play the way that we're playing. I love how caught up in the process that we are, um, caught up in things that we're trying to accomplish throughout the game. I think that has really been great for this team. How cognizant are you about just what needs to be done in terms of putting yourself in a position to host postseason play and then in terms of translating that to the team? Is that something you get caught up in a little bit or, or is it not something you worry about? Yeah. No, again, I think if that's the journey that we want to go on, we have to present that journey to them. So um, I'm very aware of what we need to do. Our team's very aware. We would love more than anything to host a regional at the Jane. Um, since my first year, that's all we've talked about. And to have the senior class in their final year be able to host at the Jane would be unbelievable.
Was that one of those goals sort of at the beginning of the year that you were like, we want we want to host a regional at home? Yeah. I mean, we've talked about going further than we've ever gone and to be able to host. Those those have been our two things that, that we are wanting to do this year. Having a deep staff is something that, you know, you're really blessed with this season. Um, but not only deep, but they're all starting to kind of peak at the, at the right time, uh, kind of coming into their own, particularly Reggie in that second game. I, I thought that was perhaps your best outing of the season. Could you just speak to, you know, how that's all kind of coming together? Yeah, the, that, um, you know, I think with the pitching staff, they're a team within the team and um, they are coming together. You could see at times this year where we'd have maybe one that's kind of hot, the couples that are trying to figure it out, you know, where it's sticking out like that. And I think you're starting to see them work together, which is what we need to do. Um, we need to have staff. We've talked about having a staff since day one. It's just this this league and the uh, schedule that we have, it's, it's too tough to depend on solely one and maybe another. Um, I thought Reggie coming on Saturday and giving us six innings was was big time, and we need that from her. I mean, she's she does a good job of making the opponent put the ball on the ground, and we totally believe in our defense, so I think it's a great combination. What are you expecting out of uh, Arizona this week? And I know they took the series mm -hmm. in Tucson last year, but they've they kind of taken some lumps uh, this season in conference play. It's it's interesting because you can look at everybody's records and what it looks like, and to me, it, like it doesn't even matter. Um, I just think that Pack is so potent that it's just it's going to be a battle this weekend, and you know they've had some struggles this year. I don't even think about that. I don't think our team does as well. Um, they they're potent at the plate. They've got a lot of power. They've got slappers. They've got speed. They've got a pitching staff as well. So I think it's a very good matchup between the two teams. I think it's going to be about which team is able to execute and come up clutch in big moments that's going to allow to, you know, take the series. And um, uh, getting to see Allie uh, drafted this weekend, what mm -hmm. did that mean for you? Love it. Love it. Um, I think of Allie when she first got here and she was so quiet and just trying to figure things out. And I think of her now and she's like our leader and uh, general on defense. And just when you talk about the word clutch, that's her. You know, so I I think every one of them want to hear their name called, you know, to be, have the opportunity to play after college softball. So I think to hear for her, all of us to listen to her name being called to be able to go play in the league. Uh, I know she's excited. We're all thrilled for her. And it's just all of her hard work, all everything that she's done in these, you know, in her career here to give her that opportunity. So I'm excited, but we still have a lot to do here. So when that gets here, it gets here. And then uh, Tara kind of released a statement saying, like, I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm going in this way. I'm, I'm, I'm not kind of focusing on on softball right now. Is it are, are those kind of talks that have been kind of ongoing uh, this season? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, as these guys are each year as they're coming back, we're talking about what their major is looking like and softball and on all of them at that as student athletes. But then as they're getting ready to move on their way out, we start talking to them about what's next. So I think Tara's got tremendous opportunities in anything that she wants to do. So I'm, I'm excited to see what that looks like as well. It looked like you had uh, Elise back in uniform. Obviously she didn't pitch, but um, could you speak to what, what that could present, uh, an option that it would give you moving forward, another arm that people haven't seen before? Yeah, I mean, the scout, there's not a lot of scout on her. So to have that late in the season would be great. So we're just still kind of taking it one day at a time to see what it's going to look like. With Alyssa, she had a little bit of a slower start to conference play, but last weekend hits the home run in game one, home run in game three, had two more that went to the winning track. What did you see from her sort of just putting it together last weekend? Um, I would say just... Gosh, I, I think Alyssa's got a beautiful swing. She's got a ton of power. Um, so I think she's just, you know, we're at a time in, in the year where these guys, we've played a ton of pack. We've played, you know, the majority of our season. It's just they're figuring some things out that are allowing them to, you know, put themselves in a really good position as individuals and also as a team late in the season. So I I love what she's doing. I mean, that's why we brought her here, you know, because of the power that she brings. So I would love to, for her to continue doing what she's doing the rest of the way. One question I just want, were the jalapenos hotter down there? <laughs> yeah. 
they're hot and I don't care. I'll eat a whole jar of them. If they, that's what it takes. So, but no, it's been fun. It's been fun doing that. I think, you know, it's a long season and, um, all the hard work that we put in preparing for teams, preparing on, um, you know, physically for the games, you got, you got to keep things light and, and fun to go along with it. So I think this team has done a really good job of that too. Gotta love a head coach that's willing to do anything to win. Coach Lombardi willing to, to eat a jar, maybe even a bucket full of jalapenos if that's that's what it takes. You know who hit a home run last week? Paige Sinicki hit a home run. The Duck shortstop coming up after this break. You're listening to Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear roads, trails, and rivers. Ready for some SUV action? Drive family adventures with the Highlander. Make a splash with the RAV4. Or haul fun with a Sequoia. Check them at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Hey, Duck fans. We're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. Dear Sharp Turns, Toyota has more all-wheel drive sedans than any other brand. Get a grip in the stylish Camry, the elegant Crown, the striking new Prius, or the Sharp Corolla. Get to Toyota.com already. Toyota, let's go places. Don't go anywhere. Duck Insider continues after these messages on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. From Learfield. I've been driving trucks for a long time. And safety is my number one priority. I know that my truck has huge blind spots. That's why I remember to check my mirrors often for smaller vehicles. Everyone can help keep our roads safe. Next time you're behind the wheel, try to avoid lingering in those blind spots. It can be dangerous. Let's all plan to share the road safely. Learn how at www.sharetheroadsafely.gov. I found hope in the midst of an overwhelming situation. Alcoholism is a disease that can affect any family. Everyone suffers, but there is help and hope at Al-Anon Family Groups. Al-Anon gave me my life back. I'm a better father and husband. Are you in an overwhelming situation because of someone else's drinking? Al-Anon Al and, and Alateen can help. help. Local and virtual meetings are available. Maybe one could work for you. Call 1-866-200-0033 or visit al slash hope. And welcome back inside the Country Financial Studio. Duck Insiders brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack down in Berkeley today, so I'm stepping in today. Paige Sinicki has started 39 games at shortstop, and in game one of three against Arizona State, a 5 2 win for the Ducks. Paige Sinicki hit her first home run of the season. Sometimes when it rains, it pours. Here's to her getting going offensively moving forward. She spoke with the media this week leading up to the series with Arizona starting tonight at the Jane. Pack the Jane. It's going to be a, a great weekend. Tremendous weather tomorrow. Here's Paige Sinicki. Paige finally got that first home run this weekend. Just how'd that feel? It felt good. It just felt good to um, finally square up a ball and not hit to go straight to someone. <laughs> so it felt nice that it went over the fence and then um, just finally got to meet my team at home, which was the best feeling, honestly. You said last week when you got that two RBI double that like a curse was lifted off you. Did you feel like even more so this weekend where you're finally able to put one over? Yeah, I just think it's, um, I'm just feeling good at the plate and I just um, know I can do it for my teammates and it helps that uh, all of us can be consistent all around. And I think um, having everybody through the lineup be able to contribute is really nice and I think um, that curse definitely went off of it so for you how do you build that consistency because it has been over the last few weeks a more consistent approach to play for you so has anything changed and what builds on that um, I think it's just trusting my process and just knowing that it's going to land at some point and um, hard at bats or hard hits are just the same as a, a positive at bat and as long as I can just keep um, bringing positive at bats to my team that's going to land and it's going to be um, more beneficial in the long run um, so I'm just going to keep that consistent mindset and keep swinging hard and being aggressive and then um, it'll fall in the time that we need it, especially um, coming into our last three weekends with PAC. What was the overall feeling just from the team after that sweep? Because that's something that 
the Ducks haven't been able to do down there in Tempe in a couple of years. Yeah, I honestly felt pretty good because ASU swept us last year at home. So it was like, let's um, sweep them at home. And I think it's putting us in a good position to come play against Arizona this weekend. And just the rest of the series after that, I think it's going to keep us um, hot and we're going to go into postseason knowing exactly what we need to do as a team to um, keep going forward as a team. Do you look at that for motivation where th this team did X against us last year and now we want to do Y against them this year? So does, does that sort of like go into your mindset? So you look at last year's results and sort of take them in as bullet form, bulletin board material or motivation for this year against that same team? Yeah, I think it was part of it, but I think we all say that we want to go farther than we did last year. And so that mindset has pushed us to um, play as hard as we can and as aggressive as, as a whole unit to do the, do well against those teams. Um, I think knowing that they beat us last year, I think um, knowing that we could take the series from them at their home field is something that we all want to do, um, especially going to Cal next weekend. We'll probably want to do the same thing is that uh, let's take a series from them and let's sweep them at their home field because that's just going to put us in a better position um, all around. You guys had some pretty key defensive plays to keep momentum from, from changing and swinging. Um, how does that feel, and particularly with the double plays? I know you, you talked about how grabbing that momentum on defense and carrying it into the offense. Yeah, we said we wanted to lead the pack in double plays this year, and so um, we are right now, which is awesome. And I think it's definitely helping the pitchers out, and as a whole team, it puts us um, with more momentum. And I think that's huge as a whole offense. We can go into the offense and be able to hit with knowing that we're stopping it on defense. So I think um, our pitchers are putting us in a great position on defense to make the plays we need to. Um, and then getting that double play, it's, it's a great feeling because you're just off the field like that. Um, and then we get to just use that momentum on the offense side. Is that something you guys are cognizant of or trying to, trying to do when you know, the pitcher gives up something or something doesn't go your way and you're racing that? Yeah, I think like they'll get, if there's like a lead runner on, we'll be like, we got you, let's get this double play right now. Um, that's what me and Bunk say all the time constantly is like, let's get this lead out now um, and let's get us back in there. And I think that, um, it's almost like we're manifesting it into the air, and I feel like it's really helped us as a defense, and then um, we're just making all the plays we need to right now, and I think it's been really beneficial. What was your perspective on Kai's play in, in game one where she made that play in foul ground? Did you see it? Yeah, when she um, jumped to the foul, <laughs> I'm so hyped for her. I love diving plays and seeing like my teammates, especially Kai, who's um, had an injury and then coming out and just playing amazing and so free right now, just seeing her to – go all out, all out for it, and it's amazing. Like, that's something I would do for anybody, and I think that Kai doing it for us, it just is like a, it's a great feeling as a teammate, knowing that she'll do anything, go through a wall for us. And so um, I think it puts us in a really good momentum shift too, like making those plays. You think Kedri was trying to one-up her with her diving play the next day? <laughs> yeah, those sisters are always trying to one-up each other. Um, in our apartment, they're always trying to, whenever we play card games, they're always trying to compete and um, beat each other. So I definitely, I could see Ked trying to do that. <laughs> You and Taya both left side of the infield, back to back in the order. She had a pretty big weekend, both offensively and defensively this week. Can you talk us through a little bit of your guys' relationship and then just how her weekend was sort of able to put together from your perspective? Yeah, I think it's like me and her are always just talking on the field and in the dugout, just like keeping us level, level headed and just making us feel free. Um, I feel like both of us can get um, in our head a little bit sometimes. So having someone that you can go to, especially like right next to you on defense, I feel like we can we always just make each other breathe and we just always have a fun time. And that's what we just try to constantly remind ourselves. Um, and I think that kind of happened this weekend. It's like, hey, like I got you and um, we got her. So like it's just like her knowing that we got her and that things are going to come along, just um, trusting her process and her letting me know that I need to trust my process. It's She's like a great teammate of mine and one of my best friends. So I think having a best friend next to me like that, it's so easy to play for each other at that point. And I think that's what um, Taya's starting to do and I'm starting to do with her. So it helps a lot. Coming into this season, you guys obviously prepared mentally, physically, and you guys were really confident. Obviously, the season has not been perfect. You've had your ups and downs. What was something that maybe you've learned through the season um, that you might not have expected to learn um, that has helped you uh, kind of get through some of, the, of that adversity that you faced? I think it's just knowing like things are going to get tough and that when you get like when things get tough, it's like how gritty are you going to be? Um, I constantly remind myself that I need to be the grittiest person um, on the field, outside of the field and in school. And I think that's continued to um, push me through the hard, hard hardships I've had. And I think being gritty um, is going to keep me going into this um, postseason and also um, the next three series. So I think when things get hard, it's just like 
where is that passion that's going to continue to lead you? And then just um, trusting my process. And um, I think a lot of us teammates also like um, really got big into our faith and was able to really put a lot of pressure on that part of it and like seeing that part of the side of softball. And I think um, just knowing that you play for uh, bigger things than, uh, than just the game. So I think that's helped me a lot. Where does that drive and grittiness come from? Um, I just love the game. I've been playing since I was little and I love playing for my teammates. I love that it's a team sport, but it's also a little bit individual. And I think just having that feeling like every game, like at the end, like when we win, it's the best feeling. And I like play for that feeling. And I play for my teammates to have that feeling also. Um, I think back to like Stanford when there was that catch I made and that moment, like that like feeling I had is something that I love and I never want to leave or lose. So I think I play for those those moments and um, I just will always have that passion for that. You're talking about Stanford last year? No, this past um, th this past series when there was a shortstop and I caught the ball to save the game. And I just like love the feeling of my teammates coming and just knowing that it's um, that we did it. And I think that's the most rewarding feeling is that we as a team did it and it's awesome. Speaking of the gritty, can you talk about Stevie's performance on that third game? Um, I mean, she came through you know, a couple of hiccups here and there, but she always came through and, and buckled down when she needed to and what that was like playing behind her. Yeah, I, I love playing behind Stevie and she's one of the most grittiest persons I've played with also. Um, I've played against her in travel ball growing up and I was like, man, I just want to play behind her. So seeing her get on the mound, even after she might not have been feeling the greatest like um, the week prior, it's like I knew that she was going to do her job and she knew she was going to do her job. And I think um, she just did a well, like great job at coming in the zone and just letting the defense work and seeing her get the first two strikeouts of the game. I was like, yep, she's ready. I was like, We're, we got her back. So um, it's a great feeling for Stevie and I'm happy for her. For you defensively, would you rather play behind an up ball pitcher or a down ball pitcher? Um, I love playing behind a down ball pitcher just because I get more plays probably. <laughs> but also like having the chance to get, get some good pop flies too, it's a little easier. So it, I guess it just depends on the day. Um, but I love playing behind all my pitchers. So, For you as we continue to move forward throughout the season, three weeks left to pack, what sort of goals or benchmarks do you have for either yourself or, or the team as a whole? Yeah, I just think as a team as a whole, I just think we need to stay consistent um, one through nine or not even one through nine, but one through 17 as hitters, like we're all contributing. And I think that is something that's been great these past few weekends is that we don't have to just um, put all our pressure in one person. Like we're all doing it one through 17. I think that's a great feeling as a team. And I just hope that we continue that and keep making the consistent plays on defense and keep getting lead outs and double plays um, and then keep the pitching going well. Um, personally, I just want to keep staying consistent and uh, level minded in um, my mentality and just um, keep trusting my process because I know that this is the part of the season that um, is going to matter the most when it comes to postseason. So just starting free again and just um, producing, uh, mental, or producing as offensively and um, yeah. What was it like seeing uh, Ali get drafted? Oh my gosh, I was so happy for her. We were sitting in the SPC and I was just waiting for her name to be called and just knowing, I know exactly probably what she was feeling because everybody has a dream of playing pro and so. I know at that moment she was maybe nervous, but I knew 100% she was going to get drafted. So it's awesome to play beside someone like Bunk. Um, she just has taught me so much. She's like a mentor to me. So knowing that she's going to go um, play out her dream is like really fulfilling for me. And she deserves uh, all of that. And so I'm super proud of her and happy for her. Yeah, that's, that's really good stuff uh, right there. The Ducks. First of three tonight on ESPNU tonight, Pac-12 Networks the rest of the week. And the Ducks and the Wildcats, traditionally a, a very exciting series. And uh, hope to see you at Jane Sanders Stadium tonight. Let's get a break. Come back. Stevie Hansen talking with the media here on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. At Shadow Hills Country Club, we're more than just an award-winning golf course and practice facility. Our events team offers all-inclusive event pricing that allows us to take care of all the details while you enjoy your event. Our indoor and outdoor venues offer you a wide variety of fully staffed options that put the focus on you. From weddings to business and social events, at Shadow Hills Country Club Events Center, you get the benefits of a resort atmosphere and amenities in a peaceful country setting. Just minutes from downtown Eugene. Call for a tour today or visit Shadow Hills Events Com. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. 
They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Duck Insider. Duck Insider. Duck Insider continues after this timeout on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Medicaid and CHIP offer free or low-cost health coverage for children and teens. Hospital and doctor visits, prescriptions, shots, and more are covered. That's peace of mind for parents if a child is sick or gets injured. And parents may now be eligible for Medicaid, too, even if they've applied in the past. Enrollment is always open. Visit insurekidsnow.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The United States Deputy Sheriff's Association is a national nonprofit and the largest non-governmental provider of services to law enforcement. The USDSA assists city, county, state, and federal agencies with free safety equipment donations and officer survival training along with cash donations to families of law enforcement officers who perish in the line of duty, college scholarships for the children of law enforcement, a citizen awareness program, and more. For more information on the USDSA and how you can help, visit usdeputy.org. Welcome back inside the Country Financial Studio. Duck Insider brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union. Tonight at 7.30, Oregon softball in action at the Jane. Stevie Hansen will be pitching. She has 16 wins this year. That's second in the Pac-12. And, uh, well, let's hopefully uh, see 17 tonight. Uh, here's Stevie Hansen speaking with the media earlier this week. This outing last weekend, just how did it feel to, to put something together like that? Uh, it was an amazing feeling, and, like, I love getting to pass the ball off to Morgan, just seeing her all weekend just be so consistent and so great. So it's fun to just be able to know that all of us have got, like, something to do and something to contribute to the game to just keep us going forward, keep us – keep having the momentum and the, like, just – the want and the fight to win. So it's really exciting just to see like all of this coming together while we're going towards the end of season. How much do you appreciate having that support staff? Last year, you know, there was a lot of reliance on you because of situation and circumstance. This year, you may not feel your best and you're able to say, I don't feel my best, you know, and someone else can step up and take that load. Yeah, I love it. I love having um, all of us working together. We have a great time. Our bullpens are all fun together. So like, we're all just good friends and we're excited for one another whenever we're out on the field and we just see each other doing well, throwing good pitches. Like maybe they were struggling during the week or I was struggling during the week on a specific pitch and then they see us in game and they're dominating it and we're all just so excited for each other. Like, yes, way to go. And it's just awesome to just, at the end of the game, we're saying like, who had a great day today? And we always can say the pitchers, like they're always just whoever it is had just a great day. Speaking of great days, you started that game three out, as uh, she said, with two strikeouts. I mean, did you feel it going into the game, or did you feel that? I mean, because you kind of had a an edge those first couple of batters that you faced. Uh, the funny thing was, is I was battling some food poisoning during the whole week coming up, so I wasn't even sure how this weekend was going to look. But I just kept telling Coach Lombardi, like, whatever you need, I'll give. Like, I want to contribute in some way or help in some way. And it's nice having, like, that freedom on the field, knowing, like, watching our performance all week that hitting-wise and fielding-wise that they've got my back. So even if I wasn't having a good day as far as, like, getting strikeouts or anything like that, I knew that defense was going to pick me up. When did you sort of know that Morgan was like, okay, she she can do it in the circle? Because even she mentioned that like her fall ball campaign wasn't the best. When was the moment for you when it clicked? Like, okay, I've got a legitimate backup in Morgan that can pick me up and I can pick her up. I just think from the minute we started just doing inner squad scrimmages, like just seeing how she was doing against our own team, which we've got some great hitters, like all 17 of them. So it's like knowing and watching her during the fall, throwing inner squad scrimmages and like coming into season, we were all kind of just waiting for that, that game where she feels on top of the world. And I think she did that her first game out and it just hasn't stopped. And I'm just so excited for her going forward. In conference play especially, she's gone through a pretty extended stretch of really good performances after really good performances. For someone like you who's had a, some similar stretches the same way, 
How do you continue to build on those performances? And then what have you seen from her to have her continue that consistency? Uh, I think we both just kind of just talk to each other between games on just how we're feeling. Just in general, we'll talk in the bullpen just about like our pitches in general. And I think we just use each other to bounce back off of or like certain hitters during a series. We're like, you know, they're doing really well off this pitch. They're just like and be heads up or hey you need on her she's turning really good on my inside pitch so watch that and we can just help each other out going forward like in the series just helping to help the other one out how much did that play into game three with Acuna specifically because you guys hadn't gotten her out in the first two games and then I'm pretty sure she went over in the final one uh, I think just watching our um, videos together, like we're all just seeing what each other is doing really well against each other and what we like maybe like, hey, I, I probably need to get that over a little bit more or just watching that and like talking about it as like a pitching staff in general and talking about like, all right, this is our plan in the first game. This is our plan for the second game. Just going hitter to hitter that way. Last weekend, it was defense in the outfield, defense on the infield, whether it was a double play or a nice play, just pitching in front of that defense. How does it feel for you in the circle with that team behind you defensively? There's no cares in the world on what they're going to do. I know they've got my back, and so it's just trusting them fully, and they've never given me a reason not to trust them. So it's just it's exciting getting to see the plays that are getting made. And, like, sometimes they're just so fast. I turn my head, and someone's already made the play, and I'm like, dang it, like, I missed it. But then I'm going back after the games watching the highlights, and it's just so fun. And then seeing Kai make that play in the outfield in the first game, like, you get to go back and watch it, and she's on NCAA softball's Instagram, like – just those kind of accomplishments, seeing people do that, it's just really exciting. What is it like for you and the whole team when, when someone does get recognition like that on, on sort of a national stage? Oh, we love it. We love to just be like, that's my teammate, show her off, just be like, you know, like we just want everyone to just see what we've got because we're just so proud of everyone and what they're doing and just seeing what they're working on in practice constantly. It just playing on the field, it's unreal. Paige said she used to face you in travel ball. Who 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 used to win those matchups when you guys faced off? It really went back and forth, and it was always just a battle. There was games where, like, I would strike her out and maybe she'd roll over a few times, and then, like, we'd play each other the next weekend and she'd hit two home runs off me. Like, I remember there was one game she hit back-to-back -back home runs off me, and then the next weekend I was like, that's not going to happen. And, like, I knew we were going to play each other again, so it's – fun to see like the how that time has changed from then versus now with such like a tight knit kind of softball community a lot of you guys played travel ball against each other is there anyone who you had a lot of success against or anyone who hit you a lot in travel ball that's on the team um I think Paige would be the number one that hit me the most that one was always it was just a back and forth battle um I didn't really play against so much of the girls here but definitely in pack, there's like few girls that I played with and I'm like, oh, now I have to pitch against them. Like, great. <laughs> so it's just it's fun and it's cool to just know like how like I played with them. Now I'm playing against them. Like it's a weird kind of change in times. Does it give you more confidence pitching against someone who you pitched against in travel ball? Um, sometimes. And then there's times where it's like, oh, I know they're working on things. I know they have a great hitting coach there. Like, I don't know if they like, I knew they weren't very good with this pitch, but maybe that changed. Maybe their swings completely different. And so it's cool to see the film and try and figure out like, oh, what did they improve on? What do I need to improve on? Do they think I've improved in some way on a certain pitch? So it's kind of cool. There's Steven Hansen, uh, second of the Pac-12 and wins, maybe another tonight. You could tell that she just thinks the game at a really high level. Ducks and Wildcats coming up tonight. The Ducks and the Golden Bears in baseball. We're going to talk a little bit about that, and we'll hear from uh, running backs coach Carlos Lachlan after these messages. You're listening to Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear roads, trails, and rivers. Ready for some SUV action? Drive family adventures with the Highlander. Make a splash with the RAV4. Or haul fun with a Sequoia. Check them at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. 
So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Dear Sharp Turns, Toyota has more all-wheel drive sedans than any other brand. Get a grip in the stylish Camry, the elegant Crown, the striking new Prius, or the sharp Corolla. Get to Toyota.com already. Toyota, let's go places. Duck Insider, your home for the latest news on Oregon athletics on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. You're never completely ready to adopt a teen. For late nights writing English papers. For your teen's music taste. For dinners, where they talk more on their phone than with you. For the first time, they call you mom. You're never completely ready to adopt a teen, and you can't imagine the reward. To learn more about adopting a teen, visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. He sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. For many military veteran caregivers, their caregiving journey starts earlier in life and lasts longer. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey and better care for your loved one and yourself. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Back here on Duck Insider, Jordan Brenner inside the Country Financial Studio. Duck baseball on the road. It'll be three games on the road before coming home next week to face Gonzaga in the midweek. Critical series against a Cal team that, well, they don't have a lot of wins, but they play teams particularly tough at home. This game tonight, 7 o'clock. Joey Mack has you covered for the pregame show at 6.45 p.m. It'll be a 7 o'clock game tonight, 2 o'clock tomorrow, a noon start time on Sunday. The Ducks looking to bounce back after a disappointing loss against Portland where some good things happened, specifically Gavin Grant. That's who I'm watching for tonight because I think he's about to flip the switch on his season. A multiple home run game against Portland. Sure, he had the defensive miscue late in the game. Gavin Grant will tell you that's a play that he has to make. I'm looking for him to have a, a big series. He had a huge series down in the Bay Area, for example, last year against Stanford. Watch out for him. I'm also going to be watching for uh, Oregon's closer, Josh Malaris. Now, another player who struggled a little bit in the midweek against Portland, but the Ducks still have a dominant closer. You're going to give up a run eventually. Josh Malaris went on an 18-inning scoreless streak to start the season. Finally gave up a run in the midweek. I think, uh, honestly, knowing Josh Miller's, that's going to make him upset. It's going to make him mad, and I think he pitches well uh, under those circumstances. Thirdly, tonight's starting pitcher is Jay Stoffel, the back-to-back -back pitcher of the week. He's the perfect guy to have on the hill for the Ducks tonight uh, looking for that bounce-back victory. Oregon is right there in Pac-12 play. Sure, a couple of blemishes on the postseason resume with midweek losses to Portland and Niagara. But ultimately, if you win or come close to winning the Pac-12 conference, you're going to be in a, a really good position when we're talking about seeding in the NCAA tournament. Uh, you know, honestly, not that far uh, from now. So Duck Baseball tonight at 7 and Joey Mack on the call at 645. One of the best interviews in the department is the running backs coach, Carlos Lachlan. You're about to see this, but his energy, you could feel it through the screen. Somebody, he, you just get the feeling, loves what he does. Here is uh, the running backs coach, Carlos Lachlan, spring game coming up here soon. A lot of the time we talk about players really developing in year two in the system. As a coach, have you kind of noticed yourself developing, picking up new things in the system with these other coaches? Um, I mean, you're going to learn every day. I always tell my guys, no, no level, let, let your cup get too full. You can always pick up some knowledge, some things from um, wherever you go. So I'm, this year I've been spending most of my time really studying defense. 
Um, like I said, we got some of the best defensive minds um, in college football here with Coach Landon, Coach Taj, Coach Meat, Coach Tony, all those guys over there. So um, man, I'm learning every day. Bucky and Noah being so productive last season, where, where's that next step for them? Where, where's that focus for you in spring ball to, to get those guys to another level? Um, for me, with those two, um, you know, um, it's just about being, um, I'm pressing on them more to become um, leaders. The football part, um, I'm gonna help them take care of that. Uh, I'm, 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 a, I'm gonna have them on that. But it's the biggest part is um, helping them become better leaders, showing the young guys the standard, what the standard is. You know, um, those two, happy to have them. Um, it's a blessing to have them. They're very talented kids. I think um, we're gonna see some things out of both of them this year that we didn't use them last year that way. But they're capable of doing a lot of things. But my biggest thing I've been pressing on them about is about being um, leaders, not just vocal, but showing the young guys how to do, being on time, taking care of your body, studying. Um, there are, there are two great leaders in my room. They're showing the younger guys like Jordan James, Dante Dardell, um, Jaden Lamar, um, Ellis Bynum, the, um, the Kilos, uh, Preston Offer, all the guys in my room, the Bryson Cobb, showing them the proper way to do things. So they, they're just not just good players. They're learning how to become um, great leaders. Can you see growth in that? You see them taking control of the room? They ain't got no choice. <laughs> they got a good leader in there. They follow my lead. My boys, they play to my personality. Um, how they practice on the field, it's how I carry myself on the field. I love them, but they know uh, I mean business, and um, you kind of see that with my with my guys in my room, as they call themselves, or as I call them, lock boys. Uh, they locked in, they loaded, but um, I see it. I see the growth with both of them. I thought he was a productive guy at Minnesota that got him the opportunity here. You obviously on, on your guys' radar. He was so productive last year, even while sharing that with Noah. How early did you guys know that he could be? In for next season, that kind of player for you. Not just what he did this past year, but right now on paper, he's one of the top 10 returning backs in the country. So how, how early were you able to identify and know that he could do that and be that kind of player? Yeah, I like to think I got a good eye for um, running back position. I could still consider myself a back. Um, I mean, I knew that from watching him coming out of high school. Um, I recruited Bucky out of high school. Um, I always a talented, talented kid, talented, talented um, runner. Um, I mean, I knew he, I knew what he was capable of by what watching the film in Minnesota that he'll be able to translate that here. Um, but like I said, we got two of the probably top five backs in the pack here at Oregon. That's Bucky and Noah. And Noah's a little bit heavier this year. Last year, Noah played around about 192. He's like 203 now. So he's a little bit bigger. And like I said, Bucky might be the quickest one in the room. Nor by far is the fastest one in the room. So it's good having a good one-two punch in both of them. And they feed off of each other. So, um, you know, um, it's great to have both of them, both of those guys. You know, but Bucky's an alpha male in there. And then, like I said, Noah just goes steady about doing his job along, along with Jordan and everybody else. What's a bit like? You talked about how they've done a really good job just leading the younger backs. Can you talk about their the younger backs' progression and just what you've seen for them in their first spring camp? Um, both of the um, new enrollees, Dante and Jaden, they, they, they have um, come along pretty well. They understand that it takes more than just getting the ball and running in college. This ain't high school. I said, all, I said to them all the time, this ain't high school. It's college. You're gonna, it's like starting all the way back over again. You're going to earn it in, in my room. That's it. You're going to earn it. And they're starting to get in that. Both of them, are, um, they're picking up everything well. They're running hard. But the biggest thing with both of them, they're great listeners. They listen to the older guys. They're taking their coaching. And they're doing a really good job in that. But I've seen growth with them learning the playbook, learning the plays, and understanding what it is to be a running back. What's it been like working with Coach Stein and kind of getting used to his offense and kind of presenting some of your own ideas and just kind of meshing with him? Um, um, Coach Stein, great, great guy. Um, I kind of knew him before he came here. Um, me and him both, um, he worked for the guy I'm friends with, Jeff, Jeff Trailer. Um, great guy down there at UTSA, and I met him. Um, I met Will over the summer going down there working at camp. Um, very bright mind, um, much like KD was. You know, two of the same guys, um, high energy, very smart. Um, I'm enjoying my time working with him, um, open to ideas. Um, I'm excited about what the offense is going to continue to be. What does the added weight add to Noah's game? Um, well, he was already powerful, powerful for a little dude. Um, I think he's got more explosive. Um, I don't think I, I don't think guys like hitting him a whole lot, but um, it's going to help him. Not, you know, he dealt with some injuries last year. They played through. 
I think this year is going to help with that, but he looks he looks good. I think the kid has like seven or eight percent body fat, so like the lowest on the team. So um, I expect for him and Bucky to um, have even bigger year this year and continue to feed off one another. Bucky talked about trying to improve his game, particularly in pass blocking, and every running back can say that. Where do you see him in that progression? Where do you, where do you see that he has to work on in that particular area? He ain't got no choice. I'm going to stress it every day. He, the, the, everything that he just told you, guess who we hear that from? Me. <laughs> so he's just repeating what I'm in his ear about every day. Um, just overall knowledge, um, really learning defense, where the plus one hat going to come from, and not just getting up there and just, well, okay, coach said I got this. Side. No, understanding what, what the defense trying to do. And Bucky is a very smart kid. You're talking about a kid who made the dean list. He got a 4.1 GPA this past quarter. Very smart student of the game. Um, I can see him getting better than just overall fundamentals of pass pro. Not a very big guy, but he's a willing blocker. Um, has a lot of heart when it comes to that. You're the only coach that I've seen with this pullover, this logo on your chest. Is this uh, a Lachlan special or do other coaches have this one too? Um, no, nah, it's not a Lachlan special. Uh, this um, this one that we got for the bowl game, and I just – I just threw it on. I, know, I ain't got no socks on today. I thought I was going to look like Noah Witherton and not wear socks, but yeah. I had no socks on. He had socks on, so I'm like, okay. When, when you mentioned the pass pro for the whole room, how different is that this year in that the defensive line is fully healthy, well, more or less fully healthy this year, whereas last spring they, they were down a lot of guys. So when you're trying to harp on those points or you're getting scrimmages, the top end guys are there this year and they're trying to go after it whereas last year a lot of the top end guys weren't so how much does that help as a coaching point to have that competition this year uh, running back room don't change nothing for us i don't care who coach Landon them got over there we're gonna do our job they come through there we're gonna smack them in the mouth and when we're gonna we're gonna play the game the right way like i said before when i first got here to eugene my kids in my room they played my personality that's it. That's period. So I don't care who Coach Landon got over there. They come through there, and we're going to keep them off number 10, keep number 10 clean. We're going to smack them in the mouth. We saw Jordan James have a, have a bigger role last year, end of the year around Oregon State bowl game. Have you seen that kind of help, you know, buoy him up more this year and kind of build him a little more confidence? Um, Jordan is a very talented young, young man. Um, he has all the tools to be not a good back, but to be a great back. Um, and I tell Jordan all the time, um, as he continues to improve off the field, his game will continue to improve on the field. Um, using Jordan, um, just his growth last year as an example for my younger guys, I tell every guy, when we, before we bring him here to, to Oregon, I'm not the easiest running back coach in the world to play for. I am going to challenge you. I'm going to put you in some adverse situations. I don't care nothing about your stars. I don't care what rivals rank you, what 24. I do not care. When you come in this room, you're going to compete. I made a promise to Coach Campbell. I said that I am going to charge myself with bringing this room back where it's supposed to be at. So I tell these kids all the time, you come here, you're going to earn it. He earned that role last year. It wasn't given to him. And every, every guy in that room, they're going to tell you, man, Coach Locke ain't finna get nobody. No, I'm not getting you nothing. You're going to earn it. And I tell the young men that because we get so locked into the football aspect of things that kids think that's all that life is. No, the things I'm teaching you now, it's going to take you later on in life. Things don't always go your way. You got to fight. You got to scratch. You got to call for everything that you want. So that's that's what I'm doing with my, my boys in my room. I tell them all the time, the tools I'm giving you now are going to help you later on in life. You're going to earn it. I ain't giving you nothing. If you think I'm going to give you something, it's going to be one, two things. Either Coach Landon going to get me up out of here or you got to go. And I tell the kids all the time, I don't coach salt bass cookies. If you're a salt bass cookie, you got to get away from around me. And they got a bakery for that. Guess what it's called? The transfer portal. We gon' you come here, you gon' you gonna fight, you gonna earn everything. Cause I had to do the same thing. Coach Lanny had to do the same thing to get his opportunity. Had to fight and claw. So that's the mindset that I live with. All right, well, we need to take a break because I need to go run through a wall. Uh, that's Coach Lachlan right there coming back and wrapping up after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it. On Point proudly supports University of Oregon Athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union, onpointcu.com, federally insured by NCUA, equal housing opportunity. 
At Shadow Hills Country Club, we're more than just an award-winning golf course and practice facility. Our events team offers all-inclusive event pricing that allows us to take care of all the details while you enjoy your event. Our indoor and outdoor venues offer you a wide variety of fully staffed options that put the focus on you. From weddings to business and social events, at Shadow Hills Country Club Event Center, you get the benefits of a resort atmosphere and amenities in a peaceful country setting. Just minutes from downtown Eugene. Call for a tour today or visit Shadow Hills Events com. This is Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money saving, just like FDA approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Unused prescription opioid pain medicines can spell trouble. They can spell risk if taken by someone they weren't prescribed for, harm if accidentally taken by a child or pet, or overdose if they're not used as directed. Safely dispose of opioids before they can hurt your family. Find a drug take-back option such as medicine drop boxes. You may find these in your community at local pharmacies or police stations. Visit www.fda.gov slash drug disposal. Welcome back inside the Country Financial Studio. Duck Insider is brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union. Well, it's a significant night tonight on the Diamond in Berkeley, Oregon baseball at 7.05, taking on the California Golden Bears, 6.45 pregame show. Happy Jace Friday. Uh, we might need a better name for that. How, happy. I'm going to get back to you on that. I'm going to get back to you, but pack, back to back. Pac-12 pitcher of the week, and uh, he's out there again. He he won it with performances against Stanford and Oregon State. What can he do against Cal? I'm excited to see. You know, uh, he really just coming into his own. Uh, yeah, Jace the Ace is pitching tonight for the Ducks, and Oregon softball is in action at 7:30 tonight against Arizona. The first of three, the Ducks just went to Tempe and swept Arizona State for the first time since 2016. Uh, it's Yellow Night. It's Free Food Friday at Jane Sanders Stadium. ESPNU game. It's a big game. Uh, Ryan Milano, as always, on the call for KWVA. Then the next two games of the series, four o'clock and noon. Big weekend on the diamond for the Ducks. Well. I'm trying to figure out, how do I follow baseball while I'm at the Jane? Phone, Pac-12 Oregon on the phone, e AirPod with Joey over here. Okay, just doing the math here. All right, thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend, and go Ducks. Are you thinking about buying medicine online? A search for online pharmacies yields more than 20 million results. But which ones can you trust? Medicines bought from unlicensed online pharmacies can be dangerous. You may get a fake drug, your condition may get worse, or you may experience a bad reaction. Don't put your health at risk. To learn how to find an online pharmacy that's safe and legal, visit fda.gov slash besaferx. A message from